Hey guys, it's old superhero. How you doing today? You know, one question I get asked a heck of a lot by people, and since the Sunscreen Film Festival is this week, I thought it'd be a good time to field it, is superhero. If I want to learn more about being a real live superhero, what are good real live superhero movies that I can watch to kind of get educated about it? So I compiled a small list, and if anybody, you know, has one that I missed or forgot or something like that, post a video underneath this one reviewing it yourself, or just post a review in the comments below. Anyway, for me, what I usually tell people is that a real-life superhero movie should have these criteria. Uh, has to be about a guy with no superpowers in a world with no superpowers, who finds a way to become a superhero and comes out on top in the end. Okay, there's your criteria. So let's go down the list. They aren't in any particular chronological order or anything like that, but here we go. One of my favorites of all time is Special with Michael Rappaport in 2006. Now, the reason I like Special Two reasons. It kind of violates the rule a little because you don't know if Rappaport has powers or not in the movie because he does a few things that you're like, wait a minute, how did he do that? But I think the premise is that he's not supposed to. You're supposed to draw your own conclusions. And two, I've seen Rappaport in a lot of things. I like the show he had that used to come on after The Simpsons on Fox, and he just seems like a really big likable guy, and he's the kind of guy you'd like to sit and have a beer with and shoot the breeze with, so I like Special. That's my favorite. Next, you've got Defendor from 2009 with Woody Harrelson. And if you want to know the truth, I think Defendor, this is just my opinion too, is loosely based on a real life superhero called Master Legend uh, that I used to ride with a lot. And it's a very entertaining movie. The end is a little bit sad, but it captures all the criteria and it gives a good overview of what it's like to be a real life superhero. Then you've got Blank Man in 1994. People, some people say you shouldn't include comedies because they don't make the real life superhero community look cool and this kind of thing. But let's face it, a lot of what ends up happening is comical. A lot of what's ended up happening to me is comical. And Blank Man is a really good example of that. He's got the robot J5. He's got the, uh, his sidekick is named Other Guy. <laughs> and I, Damon Wayans just really brings it. And he's really believable. And it's a great movie for that matter. Uh, I just really enjoy Blank Man. I think it's really well done. I think Damon Wayans is also Handyman. Correct me below if I'm wrong, but Handyman was also supposed to be like a real life superhero one in living color, and no way in hell would he get away with doing that character nowadays. <laughs> then of course you got Super from 2010 with uh, Rain Wilson. Super catches it. Super catches it. It meets all the criteria for a really lot for a real life superhero movie. It's a good film, but I had to watch it twice to get over the gross factor of it. Because the first time I saw it, I mean, there's scenes of hentai tentacle rape and stuff like that in there, and it's kind of a gross film. But Nathan Fillon as Holy Avenger steals the show, even though he's in it very, uh, a short period of time. And it's an enjoyable film, although kind of out there. And it does give you a good overview of what it's like to be a real life superhero. Here's a really obscure one that I like. Uh, my buddy Brad Severson, the author, might like this one too, because he loves obscure film. If you can find a copy of it, more power to you, because I saw it on TV one time years ago. It was made in 1996, and it's about a cop whose kid gets killed, 
And then he gets a toy maker to make all of these super gadgets for him to go out and avenge his son. And the film was called Prey of the Jaguar. And it was good. I don't know why it doesn't come up on more film lists. Maybe it didn't have that wide of a distribution or something like that. I don't know. But Prey of the Jaguar meets all the criteria. And it's really, really good. Here's a bizarre one. And a lot of people fall back on this one as their mantra real-life superhero movie. And that's Mystery Men from 1999. It's kind of bizarre, though, because Mystery Men was written by a guy named Bob Burden, who has actually commented about the real-life superhero community and been interviewed about the real-life superhero community. Uh, the odd thing about Mystery Men is, in Bob Burden's comic book, The Flaming Carrot, the Mystery Men were all just secondary characters. They were, uh, you know... Uh, backup. They were background characters. They were, you know, and the flaming carrot was the actual focus of the comic. Uh, I have heard, I do not know if this is true or not, that they actually shot test footage of a guy in a flaming carrot suit for the movie Mystery Men. And they just didn't like the way it looked on film, so they dropped the flaming carrot from it and just went ahead and called it the Mystery Men and made all the background characters the main characters. I don't know if that's true or not, but it uh, does fit all the criteria for a real-life superhero movie, and if you want to see it, it's considered to be one of the mainstays of real-life superhero films. Now, two that are uh, worth mention for me specifically, and they don't they, well, they kind of meet the criteria, but it's about actual uh, established comic and radio characters, and that's The Shadow in 1994 and The Phantom in 1996. And, of course, the reason I like both of these films is it's common knowledge uh, I legally pack when I'm on patrol, and The Phantom and the Shadow are both dual wielders. If you see these pictures here, they like their 45 long slides. They know when it's time to quit screwing around and trying to use, you know, bear mace or a stun gun and go to town if they want to stay alive. And in both movies, they demonstrated that. An interesting bit of trivia about the Phantom, and this is really humorous to people in the real superhero community as well, is that, uh, in the Phantom, the Phantom's trademark in the comics was those stripy trunks that he wears. Like, you know, they say all superheroes wear their underwear on the outside. Well, the Phantom wore these stripy trunks. They actually tried them on Billy Zane for a few shots, and when they looked at the dailies, they said, no, nah, the trunks are too ridiculous, just lose the trunks. Like, the head-to-toe purple gimmick wasn't ridiculous enough. So they took the trunks off of him and made the movie without the trunks. Weird. And just in case anybody thinks I forgot about it, the Watchmen film in 2009, uh, which is based on the book by Alan Moore that is considered to be a main staple of the real-life superhero community, almost like a Bible for the real-life superhero community, I didn't want to bring it up because a lot of people poo-poo it because Dr. Manhattan's in it and he's got powers. But if I were you, I'd read the book, uh, then see the film, uh, or vice versa. Either way, you won't be disappointed with either one. Uh, I was one of Patrick Wilson's bodyguards a few years ago at the Sunscreen Film Festival. There's a good interview with me and him about that film further down in my videos if you look. Enjoy it. Now, a bizarre one is Kick-Ass. Uh, it's based on a very dark, dark, dark comic. And usually what films do is they butcher comic properties. They take a comic property, they hack it up, they make it for a general audience, and they basically ruin it. I like Kick-Ass. I took Lady Hero to see Kick-Ass saying, 
you know, I'm just warning you in advance, this is gonna be a really dark movie. And the way that they made it for a general audience, all the characters were likable, it was very light, it was enjoyable, it was happy, it was very well done. There were characters in the book that you were happy when they were dead, that in the movie you were disappointed when they were dead. So that is the one instance that I can think of where a comic book was turned into a better movie uh, by butchering the property. So yeah, see Kick-Ass. Trying to think if I missed anything here. I've got one more to bring up, and the reason I waited until the very end is it is considered to be the real live superhero movie on a lot of people's lists, and one of mine too. It, ha it meets all the criteria, it's realistic but light, it has a great message, has a great actor who's uh, unfortunately passed away and left us way too soon, and that's Hero at Large from 1980 with John Ritter. It's hard to find, but if you can find a copy of it, by all means get it. It's about an actor who is uh, standing as a job in a superhero suit in front of movie theaters promoting a movie when he accidentally stumbles across a robbery and the whole thing gets out from underneath him and he ends up becoming a real superhero and the company ends up promoting him and he gets caught and the whole thing turns into a mess but it's john ritter at, in, at his best if not more obscure work you'll really enjoy it and that is probably one of the top movies you can see that'll give you an idea about the real life superhero community uh that's about it so there's your list of films. If you want to go out and rent some and see some about the re what it's like to be a real life superhero, like I said, if you can think of one I missed, please send a video response. I'll approve it or put it in the comments below. And I hope you guys have a good one. And I hope to see a lot of you at the Sunscreen Film Festival. Stay super.